get started today, we're going to take a look at the email you received from your employer that prompts you to create a login. You must be on a desktop computer when you activate your account. You will receive an email from your employer. It will come from FlexChecks iSolved. It will have your employer's name listed here. And inside it has very important information about how you can create your account. So it says, welcome to your company. Below are your login credentials. Your account must be activated before it can be used. And below the link here, it says that your authorization code is the last four digits of your social security number. Also, your username is your email address. So let's go ahead and click on this link. As you can see, a new web page comes up. And this is the employee self-service authorization page. We're going to type in the information that's in your activation email. So your username here is grayed out. You can't change it. It's your email address. It gives you a client code, your company name, and your name. All this information cannot be changed. Your authorization is the last four digits of your social security number. And it's going to prompt you to create a password. And this password has to be 12 digits long and include one special character, one uppercase, and one lowercase. It does seem like a lot of characters, but it is payroll information. That's why we make it so secure. The system asks you to fill out a challenge question. and an answer. And then down here at the bottom, it asks for your mobile phone number. You don't have to enter that, but if you work in a field, um, it might be wise to do that because they will send a verification code so that you can prove that um, you are actually trying to log into your employee self-service account. So if you choose to, you would enter a mobile phone number. Let's hit continue. All right, we've logged into employee self-service. Let's talk about employee self-service for a minute. Up here under this person icon, if you go to user preferences, you can add or change your phone number, change your password, or change your security question. You can click on this university link if you'd like to access help documents or recorded videos about the iSolve system. In order to view your pay stubs, you would click on this employee self-service button and then click on pay history. You will see a, a historical record of your pay stubs pop up right here. You'd select which one you'd like to view and then click the view print pay sub button on the blue action bar. You can go ahead and change the year by selecting the drop down that says year. The W-2 ACA 1099 form section is where you can obtain a copy of your PDF W-2 after the current tax year. If you'd like to change your personal information such as your address, you would click on name address updates. If you'd like to change your direct deposit information, you would click on direct deposit updates. And you can either add a new direct deposit or change an existing direct deposit. You would select your account type and then put your routing and account information and click save. And finally, if you'd like to change your federal, state, or local withholding information, you can click on Tax Updates, which brings you to the Tax Updates section. Now let's learn how to clock in and out. Up at the top is a clock icon. In order to clock in, you can choose between these two options. Quick Punch is the easiest method for clocking in and clocking out. Simply click it and it saves. The other method is called Detailed Punch. 
If you're going to be clocking in and out for meals and breaks, you will want to use the detailed punch option. There are four modes. Auto is like a quick punch feature where the system just takes the time of the punch and enters it onto the time card in the order that it was received. An example of this is if we have an 8 a.m. punch and an 8.15 punch. The system knows that 8 a.m. comes first and 8.15 comes next. So that's the order that would be put on the time card. You do have the option of selecting in or out when you punch. Transfer can be used for employees who are transferring out of one department and into another department throughout the day rather than having to clock out of one department and clock back into another department. Now that we've talked about clocking in and out, we're going to talk about our time card. So click on employee self-service, time, time card. Our time card is going to populate. At the top, we can see our employee information. Directly below that, we have the blue action bar with prompts for requesting time off and time card report. Beneath that, the current pay period is listed. You can use the arrows to toggle back and forth between time periods. You can also change the view of the time period by clicking day, week, or pay period. Regular time will show up in light blue. Any absences that are on the card show up in gray, such as sick time. Meals show up in dark blue. And any time that has an alert, such as a missing punch, will show up in bright red. You can click on Time Card Report to see a report showing the details of your time. If you would like to enter a time off request, simply go to the blue action bar, click Request Time Off, and the system will prompt you to enter the details of your request. So we'll pick our absence policy, which is paid time off. We'll choose a date. Or a date span. Choose a start time. Let's say 8 a.m. And let's say we want eight hours off. Any comments you have to your supervisor, you can put in the comments box and click Save. Now when we come back to our calendar, we can see on Thursday, we have requested eight hours off. Once your manager approves the time off request, it will show up here in gray. Last, I'd like to talk about the iSolved Go mobile application. If you'd like to use your mobile device to log in to employee self-service, to view your pay stubs, or punch in and out, you can. The application is called iSolved Go, and it is available in the Play Store for Android devices and in the App Store for Apple devices. Remember, you must log in for the very first time through a desktop browser before you can use iSolved Go. The application will prompt you to sign in with your username and password. But first, you must configure the application to be linked to our Service Bureau. To do this, you will click the gear at the lower left-hand side of the login page. This will bring you to the Global Configuration page. One time only, you will need to enter flex checks in the box. Then click Save. Your mobile device is now linked properly. You may return to the beginning of the application and enter your username which is your email address and your password to log in. On the main screen menu, you can toggle between the iSolved HCM, which is where you view your pay stubs, or the iSolved time. Here's the clock icon. In order to clock in and out, you would click the iSolved time icon and then punch in or punch out. The next screen illustrates how your mobile punch is saved. We've come to the end of our training. As you can see, it's fairly easy to log into iSolved and to access your information. Thanks for watching.